The standard way of thinking about the constitutional position of the civil service is civil servants are accountable to ministers, ministers are accountable to parliament. And then there's a little subtext, which is that some civil servants are accounting officers, uh, and those civil servants, and I've been an accounting officer in lots of departments, they're directly accountable to parliament. But subject to that, the big picture is civil servants are accountable to ministers, ministers are accountable to parliament. What should the position be? Well, in my view, it should be that civil servants are accountable to ministers and ministers to parliament. Why? Because we live in a democratic society. And imagine if civil servants weren't accountable to ministers and through ministers to parliament, what sort of society would we then have? It wouldn't be a democratic one necessarily. So I think it's all fine as a high level picture. And then when you get into the detail of it, obviously you've got some quite tricky issues. It is that impartiality, but at the same time, I think particularly in the UK, we have a very particular problem of perception. And it goes back to an exceptionally good uh, television series called Yes Minister, which created a civil service picture where the top of the service was either a Machiavellian figure that could always achieve whatever the ministers wanted, irrespective of the minister's desire, or uh, an empty vessel that simply uh, followed instructions. And I think the constitutional position we have here is a by far more nuanced one, but also I think a much more complicated one. If you have pure separation of power, as you would have in the United States of America, an incoming government would also bring its top layer of the civil service with it. We don't. Uh, we have the changes in the political masters and our political masters, unlike the civil service, are not selected in a free, impartial and open way. They're not selected on uh, merit. There are they're by, they're by the patronage of the electorate, whereas the civil service works on uh, different principles to work with the politicians. And in the United Kingdom, traditionally, we have for a very long time probably not rewarded specialist knowledge as much as we should have, and have therefore ended up with a whole generation of a very capable generalist civil service that constitutionally supports the government of the day. Well, as I've said, the civil service exists separately from the elected government and from parliament and from the other organs of the state, um, but it exists in order to support the government in uh, in the administration and in the provision of public services. And this has been governed since uh, 2000, uh, si since 2010 by the Constitutional Reform and Governments Act. So that gives some statutory status, some legal status to the civil service. And it says, as I've mentioned, that its role is to support the administration of the day, whatever its political complexion. Um, and uh, it is also subject to a statutory code which sets out at a fairly high level the role and the duties and the responsibilities of the civil service. 